I call the Honourable Minister Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think once again we're seeing a demonstration that there is nothing which Labor won't stoop to to talk down the New Zealand economy uh, for their own political gains. And actually, um, it's sort of ironic that the member uh, refers to his role in the China trade agreement, of which of course he had a role, and yet he sits on the same side of the House where a member late last year was criticising the Chinese company Hire for purchasing Fisher and Paykel appliances and uh, saying that that was not necessarily a good thing for New Zealand. So this, this opposition needs to sort out their lines in terms of the role of trade in New Zealand's future and the role of our relationships with our trading partners and our role with our second largest trading partner. But of course, consistency is not their strong point. And the other thing we heard in that speech, uh, Mr. Speaker, is a approach that once again seeks to ignore the world in considering New Zealand's economic progress. And Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to be part of a government which has worked so hard over the last four years to give this country a much better outcome from the global financial crisis than most other countries in the OECD, as well as dealing with the second shock, which the other countries didn't have to deal with, which was the Canterbury earthquakes in our second largest city. And the other side keep trying to pretend that those twin shocks to New Zealand did not occur, and Mr Speaker, of course they did. And so we come to the start of 2013 and the state of the play for New Zealand and the Prime Minister's address at the start of Parliament, Mr Speaker, and there is a huge range of things that this government is working on to encourage the growth of the New Zealand economy. And we're seeing some very good progress for New Zealand. The cost of living in New Zealand is low, Mr Speaker. Savings rates are up, Mr Speaker, and yes, we are making good economic progress, and as was pointed out by my colleague, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, uh, the Economist has highlighted the well way in which this country is being economically managed, Mr Speaker. And there's a very clear contrast between both sides of the House, Mr Speaker, because on this side of the House, we understand for more jobs and more growth, you have to have more investment from the private sector, Mr Speaker. So we're out there working constantly to create those opportunities for New Zealanders by trying to remove the impact of things that get in the way of that investment. And you look at things like our export markets, and again, ironic that Phil Goff's up talking about trade when their coalition partners, the Greens, are opposed to the, probably the biggest trade agreement that New Zealand uh, could see in the next 10 years, the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. We also have their other putative uh, coalition partner not doing us proud on the international stage in terms of our relationships with our trading partners and doing things like criticising high-value Chinese tourists coming to this country and having the opportunity to tour here like other countries and saying, Mr Speaker, that that's something that shouldn't occur. So what you have is all these opposition parties that talk a good game around growth, but fundamentally they're opposed to pretty much most things that would uh, deliver that growth in New Zealand. And I've made a helpful list, Mr Speaker. So they, of course, oppose the law changes for the Hobbit, and they still oppose them even today, they would still pop up. I, I'm thrilled that they spend their time opposing that because they keep reminding New Zealanders that they opposed a law change to help an industry grow in this country. And then they opposed the resource management law changes, the ones that we've had and the ones that we're proposing. They don't even know what we're proposing yet, but we can guarantee that they're opposed to it, Mr Speaker. They're opposed to plans to build the Auckland Convention Centre. They've put every single roadblock in the way of that that they possibly could. They're opposed to oil and gas exploration on the East Coast. The Energy and Resources spokesperson said the gas wasn't going anywhere, so we should just leave it there. We'll tell that to the people of the East Coast who would like the jobs, Mr Speaker. And, of course, they've been opposed, and at best, in the case of Labor, lukewarm on hydraulic fracturing. 
I mentioned they're opposed to the investment of Ohio in Fisher and Paykel appliances. They're opposed to speeding up the Bathurst, res Bathurst Resources consents at Deniston. They're opposed to Chinese investment in New Zealand generally, particularly if they've had a focus group recently. They're opposed to tax changes to encourage productive investment. They're opposed to irrigation. The Greens are absolutely opposed to irrigation. Labor's sort of having a bob each way. And they're opposed to lessening the ETS costs on trade-exposed businesses. Now, all those things encourage investment in jobs and growth in this country. So this country, as the Prime Minister said at the start of this year, this government is focused on making New Zealand a magnet for investment, for jobs and growth. And what is the Labour Party doing and the Greens Party doing? Well, they're busy out trying out some new slogans, Mr Speaker. They've got a couple of new slogans that they're running at the moment. And the interesting one for them is one they've um, obviously been uh, looking online at a few of the Labour Party speeches from the UK. This one that's so-called hands-on government, Mr Speaker. That's the sort of thing that they're, they're, photo sh they're, they're, they're focus grouping at the moment, hands-on government. Well, let me tell you this. Hands-on government... In the slogan of the Labour Party means only one thing, hands on your pockets. It means hands on your money. That's what hands on means. They're against every form of private sector investment. They want to reach further into the nation's pockets and spend more money because they know how to do it better. And that's their approach to growth. And what that means, a growth in New Zealand's overdraft and a growth in New Zealand's deficit. They have a program, Mr Speaker, called Kiwi Broke. Kiwi broke. It's a building scheme, Mr. Speaker. It's a code for big sparring and big spending government. So they've made up a rinky dinky taxpayer funded scheme, which, just like all their other taxpayer funded schemes, will only cost a little bit. It'll only cost a little bit. Will actually cost five to ten times what they say and deliver one tenth of the results. We had that. We threw that out in 2008 because these people only know how to stick their hands in your pockets. That's what they mean by hands-on government, hands on your wallet. And that, Mr Speaker, is the Labour Party's approach in 2013. Or at least we think it is, because the only thing we've heard from them this year was their pro-tem leader backtracking on their policy. He got up and did his State of the Nation at the start of the year and said, uh, mm, uh, oh, by the way, it would probably cost uh, 550 maybe 450 grand a house, not really 300 uh, maybe 550 and you're sitting there thinking that's all he's got to offer is he has to back down on a policy he announced prior to Christmas. And of course, not surprisingly, he's got a little maths problem of his own now because he starts the year with understand apparently uh, the rumours that with 10 abstentions in his caucus vote. Um, reported, well, we don't know who they are yet, although we could probably do a quick sweepstake. So the guy was the only one standing for the leader of the Labour Party and he got nailed by 10 of his own side who refused to vote for him. That's what happened at the caucus vote. And the reason is because he hasn't said a thing this year except that the Kiwi broke policy is already broke. And that's his problem, Mr Speaker. So on the one side of the House, you have a crowd that believe the solution is to dig further and deeper into people's pockets and to recycle the money and look like you're doing something. And on the other side of the House, there is a government that is absolutely focused on encouraging investment in productive industries in this country and not confusing that for job subsidies, which is the Greens' approach, where their definition of investment is if the government does it, it must be good. And I'm telling you, the Greens, the reality is if you look around and you're in doing something and there is nobody else there, it's not an investment, it's a job subsidy scheme, and you sit very nicely with the Labour Party because that's what they want to do. They want to get your hands in your pocket. Mr Speaker, we are very focused on making New Zealand a more attractive a place for investment, for higher paying jobs and higher growth in 2013. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Todd McClay.